guys, hope you're all doing well. Um, today's video is going to be a thorough walk around of my mid-range hiker trailer. But a lot of people want to know all the options and all the things we take along camping and just a thorough walk around. So that's what this video will be. Let's get started. So right off the bat, we had a really good time camping this last weekend. Back up to Big Rapids, Michigan, Crane Hill Ranch. Uh, we were there a couple weeks ago and completely got rained out. It was pouring 60 mile per hour gusts. So we got back and we got a redo on going back there and it turned out well. So some of the footage you might see comes from that camping experience. We were going to shoot the video there, but um, there's a lot of noise, a lot of kids running around. It would have been hard with the audio. So we chose this location at my sister's property. So right off the bat, we'll start with the side of the trailer. Um, I'll just talk about options, the different things that we optioned on it. Obviously the gray color is an option. Um, we had the, that is the 11 pound tank you see here on the side. This was an option. Um, the diamond plate, the black checkerboard diamond plate, the fender came standard on the mid range. We went with electric brakes. We opted to have the exterior lighting package. Um, the doors, we opted to not have windows. So one of the questions I get asked a lot are the doors. Why do I not have windows and doors? Couple things that we considered and each person is different. So I'm just telling you my opinion. Um, privacy and we had rented a different brand teardrop prior to purchase of this one and we did not care to have our heads on this end the huge advantage of the hiker platform is that you can sleep either direction sleep with your head over here feet this way and that's what we prefer um, but when I had a window here I would turn on the fan of that teardrop the curtains would suck into my face as it was pulling the air into the vent fan up top. So that's the main reason, is privacy. We didn't wanna to have to curtain them off and we just didn't see a need. If we had vent wanted ventilation, um, we got the big side window. So the biggest thing was privacy and just the convenience of not having to deal with um, covering that space up. So on the front of the trailer, we went with the 24 inch diamond plate this is the large toolbox. And another question I get asked a lot is why didn't you do a window here? Well, same thing, to each their own. But the way, reason we chose again was for privacy. We did not want to have to cover up a window here in the front. Um, I didn't want any chances of potentially kicking up a stone and taking out the window. Um, that was probably the main thing, it's just privacy. and not having to deal with the maintenance and doing another curtain. We also wanted to have the option of adding a shelf here, which we have not done on the interior. So that shelf we would like to run right underneath where these vents are for the AC straight across. And uh, that's something we're gonna add here in the future, but we would not be able to run that shelf across if that window was in that area. Another question I get asked a lot, air conditioning. Do you use it a lot? How much do you use it? Um, honestly, we've slept close to 25 nights in 2019 in this trailer, and we have not used it but one time. So is it nice? Yes. Hot and humid, Midwest, South, Florida. It's awesome to have. It's a great option. So it is an option to put on the AC prep package. Um, I highly recommend it if you're in the Midwest, South, Florida, those areas, out West, maybe not so much. But we do use it occasionally and we just throw it in the back of the pickup. And if we need it, we pull it out. If we don't need it, a lot of times we don't. This last trip, it was about 60 degrees overnight and turning the max fan on. And this time we pushed air in and had it push out the windows and it was great. It got nice and comfortable in there. Another question I get asked a lot is how much does it weigh? Gross vehicle weight rating is 1900. So 
that's throwing all your gear in, having the whole thing weighted down. So these jacks, uh, supporting capacity says 3,000 pounds, 2,000 pound lifting capacity for the jack. I really like the jacks. They're very convenient. But all I have to do is pull this pin and I could actually remove it if I wanted to. It's pretty dumb handy. Now on this side of the trailer, pretty much a twin to the other side. The only addition you have on this side of the trailer is you have your optional plug. So there's your plug to plug your power in shore power and you have another set of jacks on the back of the mid-range so I had a pop-up camper prior to this and what I optioned to do was take off my Yakima uh, rack uh, and move that to the hiker rack so I did opt for the hiker trailer roof rack system and that basically gets you these two square poles and then I put my stand-up bike mounts. These things are pretty sweet. Makes it super easy and convenient to throw a couple bikes on. And there's no issues with getting them up. Now you gotta remember with the bike rack system that I have here, to get up there, I use just a little two foot step ladder. Works really well. Um, this does through bolt into the trailer, but it's not recommended to put a bunch of weight on there. So that's great for putting your shoes at nighttime, putting a plate, a drink, setting something there, but it is not really designed to stand on. So I choose to put a small little ladder right here and that gets me close enough that I can get on top and set up the bikes and not have to overreach the bikes too far. So as you know, the Hiker, the standard configuration, is to have the two um, big open cabinet areas in the front which depending on how you sleep is either the head or the foot end but we opted to move the uh, three port usb thing from the side of the trailer right in this area is where a lot of hikers have it um to the middle and then we opted to do usb usb and then if you've been seeing any of my other videos i've got an on off switch voltmeter and then the voltmeter has a quick charge 3.0 built in, which I absolutely love. So I can see my voltage through the cover, but at nighttime, I can turn it off. On the inside, I got some of these felt boxes. They fit perfectly for the space. So if you're looking for something to keep small things from moving around, I just have a couple of small items. I can throw this stuff around without it having roll around in the front of the trailer while we're traveling. So those go right in here. And they lock in. Uh, we put cards, games, that kind of thing. This does go through to the other side. And this side is quick access. So we have uh, medications, bandages, kind of a little first aid kit here. This is the, my wife Wendy's little box, um, some Kleenex for nighttime. Then we carry uh, um, my dive kit that I use with all my toiletries and stuff for the bathroom. So that's right here. I can just quickly access that. It doesn't go anywhere. So in the front, you have your air conditioning ports. These will be cut in if you have your AC prep package. So you've got one on each side um, in the center here. We opted to go with a RAM tab tight HD, which is our iPad mount of choice. This just pulls out, fits your iPad, and pretty much any case you have, it will work without a problem. So we went with the larger size mounts. As you can see, we've got a, a three inch mount to a seven inch mount. All this is in the description, guys. Any of the stuff you're interested in, it's down below um, in my uh, affiliate links. So if you're interested, check it out. I'd appreciate it. Then right here, you have your switches. So I've got my switches for exterior lights and um, my switch for my max ring light. So on the inside of the trailer, we just put a couple simple command hooks. Uh, Hiker gave us this cool keychain, which is nice. Uh, it's big and oversized and you can't lose it. 
So we have all our keys on there. Um, we put another hook on the other side. That works really well. On top is our max fan. We've got the ring light, which I have on currently. That works really well. Sometimes can be really bright. So we're working on installing some puck lights, which we currently don't have yet. Um, but we're going to be installing them in the back there. So we can quickly, with us laying our heads here, we can be able to push the button and turn on a quick little night light for getting out of the trailer. So we opted in the center to do the center pass through. Absolutely love the center pass through for a lot of reasons. The main reason is it acts as a nightstand when we're sleeping with our heads this way and our feet this way. It works really well. As you can see, my wife uh, loves to be creative and puts this nice little hiking, get outside, adventure uh, mattress cover on. So while we're talking about the mattress, we have the Millard 6-inch memory foam. It does have, as you can see here, a split. It has another one in the middle right there. So it's three-piece. Uh, it can be folded up in the couch mode if you want to. We personally chose not to do this. It can become a little bit of a hassle. If we're just going to sit in here and sit up like that in couch mode, we will take some pillows and we'll put them here and here, and we can put our backs against that and then sit and watch our entertainment center if we want to but we chose not to fold it up in couch mode at all um one just for the simple ease of setting it up it's it can be done but we like to keep it uh, in bed mode all the time and two we went with fitted sheets so my wife took a queen set and wrapped them around the queen mattress and then sewn them up so they're nice and snug and they don't move around because a standard queen sheet is going to be a little bit bigger than the Millard, especially if you cut it down, which I highly recommend for closing the doors. You just cut off an inch to an inch and a half. Um, I got a video on how to do that if you want to check it out, but that makes a huge difference with trying to close the doors. So the 25 nights of sleeping, we've never once had condensation, and that includes under here. So as you can see, we've got this condensation mat. This works really well, same thing. I got a video, a full video of how we install this, how we cut it, but no condensation at all. Works great, absolutely highly, highly recommend it. Especially if you're doing any cold weather camping and you really start getting a little nervous about uh, condensation. But the key to condensation, guys, is keeping a little crack in the windows and a little circulation of your fan. So while we're in the trailer, look at the center galley. We can fold these doors all the way back which is very convenient. So we sleep with them back. And then our phones will set right here. We'll set both phones here and we'll put the transformer in the corner, which will show in the galley. So the two cords can lay here. And then we have a little puck light. We can turn on and off if we need to see what's going on. So one of the things with the center galley we found and discovered kind of by accident and just experimenting is when you have your iPad up here, and you got your little entertainment center. The sound is quite a long ways away from you when you're back over here. So what we did is this is a little Wonder Boom, one of the minis, and this thing produces some great sound. It's fully waterproof. It can be submerged in water. Uh, quick recharging, volume up, volume down. I just love this thing. I've had it for quite a few years now. And we can turn this on, Bluetooth it to your iPad device, and you set it back here. Guess what? Now you got sound behind your head and it's like stereo sound. It's pretty awesome. So it's a quick, easy way to just quickly, if you're gonna watch a movie before bed or watch a show or something, it's a nice way to get sound back here if you choose to sleep with your head back in the rear part of the galley. So up here guys, this area, we chose to completely close off the galley minus the pass through. So this is seven and a half deep up here if you're wondering. And then on this side, this is our quick drying towels. Um, I only exclusively use these. These things are so dumb handy. That's it, that's your whole bath shower towel, that small. And they do a marvelous job. So we've got a bunch of those that replaced five huge jumbo towels that take forever to dry. 
So when you're in a small space, you look for small ideas, and that's a great one. Got an extra polar fleece blanket up there. Take the chill out of the air if we need it. But uh, that's all we really keep in that area. Um, Wendy will keep her clothes in this section. That's why it's empty. She'll throw her clothes up there. I prefer to have my clothes in a backpack, and I keep those in the truck. So guys, my wife went to Meyer. She got this curtain rod, some command hooks, and made her own curtain. Obviously to match the decor and some room darkening material. So we pull this close. We have no clue how light it is outside unless you see some light coming from the max fan area. Because that is white, you'll get some natural light coming from this area through the white plastic. But outside of that, you can keep it pretty dark in here and sleep in as long as you want. So right above the jack, and I'll put in some pictures. We have the table that starts here and extends out the side. Then underneath that, we'll place our uh, Dometic fridge. We have a 50 quart Dometic fridge, and we can have that right here in this place where the table would be. So Wendy's gonna show you some of the stuff on the inside galley. So to start with, to keep the door open, we have some rope here that we attach around the corner so it doesn't get caught by the wind. And just curl it back on itself. And the nice thing about that, guys, is this is one of those wire holder commands uh, made by command. So you can wrap the wire through there and then just pull this tab up. It's pretty, pretty slick. All right, so we let Hiker know that we had these specific baskets that we wanted to use. So they made sure that they had the shelf down low enough so that these baskets would fit. And then they're deep enough for them to fit also without moving a whole lot. So that's why we have the seven and a half inches on the other side and the inside because that's how much space is left over after having the width and height of these boxes. All right, so this shelf ends up being um, from the bottom of the door here to the shelf is seven and three sixteenths. And then it is 14 and three quarters deep from here to the back for these baskets to fit. And we have the description of the baskets in the description below. So while we travel, we have five baskets in here. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of room for them to move around. But then again, while we're at site, it's hard to get things to move around. So we have one that has a bunch of our stakes and our straps for our awning. So first thing we do when we get to the site is pull this one out and use all the things that we need from this one. Then this one lives in the back of our truck the rest of the time while we're at site. All right, then the four baskets that are left, one has some food in it. So some shorter food things. So we've got some oatmeal, marshmallows, chocolate, peanut butter, just some miscellaneous things that if we don't use them on the trip, I can leave in here for the next trip because we'll probably use it the next time. Then our next one is lights. Um, if you haven't noticed from previous videos from my husband, he loves, 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 loves lights and we can never have enough of them. So we've got a basket specifically just for that. So gotta have all the lights. So we'll quickly <laughs> battery pack, 2600 milliamp stream light, awesome light gotta have a headlamp something to get around camp or you're pulling moths out of people's ears inside <laughs> joke um, transformers power cables we use a ton of these guys here we use these guys. everywhere these knights ties are indispensable we've got them in 12 inch we got them 32 inch 24 inch so we just got a little hodgepodge and then Here's our puck lights that we need to mount yet. And then um, one of the things that we still love is an old fashioned candelier lantern. Makes for a great fire replacement when you need it on a hot day. All right, then another one that we use a lot oh. is our kitchen one. So we always have some paper towel, our towels and hot pads, garbage bags, dish soap, and then we always have some extra ziplocks along. So if we need have leftovers, we can put those in there. So that stays up here. 
And then one other is miscellaneous. We don't really get into this one very often, but it's stuff that you want to have along just in case. Some small garbage bags like Meyer bags. Um, some bug spray. We got a fire extinguisher. Thermosel. We haven't tried this, but we've heard good things about it. Um, scissors, binoculars. Oh, one thing I want to tell you. Campsites, if you're looking for extra plugs, everything's a 30 amp, right? With these big RVs. Well, you can get the reverse. 30, pl 30 pin to a 15 amp. So we picked up one of these. We've used it twice now. Pretty handy to have. So yeah, we don't get into this bin real often. So one thing that I've found since we take that fifth basket out is if I really need to get something out of one of these baskets, I can just stick my hand in here and there's some space that goes up so I can still get my arm in to the basket without having to pull the basket out. If I need my paper towel or if I need my garbage bags, I can get into it without having to try to maneuver and get the basket out. Now the side note, we did put a little light in here, which runs white and has a secondary switch for red bug reasons if you have the door open all the time. Do we use it as much? No, not so much on this one because we can actually pull out the basket and just look what's inside and the contents. A lot of times the basket will come out and get set on this shelf to be able to look through what you need then get put back up here. So on this shelf when we're traveling there's usually a case of water in here. Kind of try to do it like a Tetris so that there's not a whole lot of movement for things to move around. Um, this is a basket that we found at, at home. I usually will put some produce in it. You can breathe a little bit more with the air slots in it. Um, then we have a couple of services we just keep in the trailer. Go. And I have another basket of miscellaneous, like extra plates and cups, a little broom. Actually, when we get to site, I end up putting this down on the next shelf, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So that helps open this up so I've got more space for moving things around. And as Matt had said, at nighttime, we use this kind of as our shelf to put our phones charging and various things. So I like to kind of keep a space of this open. So I got a container. I found this at Ikea and was going to use it in my kitchen and it didn't fit. So it works here. So my various um, spatulas and knives and tongs and different things like that. A lighter. Just going to keep that in the corner. Then this is a command um, little basket thing that they have. So I put some of my spices in there. Um, still need to add some more spices, but it keeps them up and out of the way. Then while we're here, as you can see here in the corner, I've got the underglow lights, um, galley step, and I got a spare switch. This is the standard hiker light that comes with the trailer. We still have that in here, and then we have the power strip. And below the power strip, um, from when I moved the voltage meter from in the cabin, I moved it out here and I put it in the back of the trailer for now. So I can either see the voltage in the back of the galley or I can take a look inside the trailer. All right, and then of course you gotta have your dish pans. So got my dish pans, got a container that we usually sit on the table that has our plates and bowls and our silverware that stays on the table pretty much the whole time unless there's gonna be a rainstorm or something, then we'll put it inside to keep it a little bit drier. So, I have that. And then in this corner, we've got two Ikea tubs that fit perfectly. Um, that's where more food goes. So, our cereal, our bread, our chips, um, other canned goods that may be needed based on whatever our meals are. So that usually between the shelf up above and then these two baskets here, I can fit all of our food. In the corner, guys, by one of these IKEA tubs, pull it out. We ended up putting a uh, 12 volt cigarette plug socket here, and then we also have a uh, another dual USB. And on the inside here, I've got a switch, and that turns on my outdoor uh, spotlight in the back of the trailer. We use this like crazy in this last trip. So we could shine up what was going on. The nice thing is, it gives you kind of a spotlight and you can direct it where you want to. So because we had that pass through, we really wanted to find a way that we could keep the mosquitoes and the bugs out of the interior bed area. So I made a little bug net, put some binding around it, and then put some Velcro on it to keep it in place. 
So just gonna attach it there. Just make it nice and taut. And that keeps it so the bugs can't get through. So that way if we open the galley in the evening, we don't get too nervous about bugs getting into our bedroom area. And then just before bed, we can take the netting down with the door shut. Then we can use this space here to put our speaker, our phones, all that kind of stuff and still have access to it. There's no concern about bugs. All right, then on the bottom shelf, we got one tub here that's basically my kitchen. Um, so this tablecloth, oh, did take that out my last trip. Um, and then I've got a skillet that I use. Um, we have a cutting board. Talking and about the skillet. What was that? Aldi, right? Yeah. So that was an Aldi skillet. It's just aluminum. Works great. It's got a nice deep groove for um, the Catching drip. Catching bacon grease. Stuff. Yep. Works great, guys. All right. Then I have a cast iron pan that we got from Matt's grandma years back. It's been around for ages in the family. Um, I use the, the cup we can use for warming up hot water. And then Matt's got, from his backpacking days, um, a way to Can you pull all this out. No, I'll show you. It's a little stove, guys, a little canister stove, hooks up to here. We can hook up and uh, make a quick hot cup of water if we need to. Then I've got a measuring cup. Got a pan for warming up a lot of different things. A good size can um, do lots of different foods with a cover. Then I have a bowl that I can use for various different things that we need to or to serve food in. And then it came with a strainer also. So if you're making pastas or potatoes or something like that, you need a strainer or you're cleaning some fruit. There you go. So, so far on all of our trips that we've done, everything that I have in this kitchen tote has worked out well. I haven't needed anything or felt like I'm missing anything. Then we have a miscellaneous tote here that has a lot of different things that we just want to take along. I found a bucket. It's a five gallon bucket that you push out. We found this at Aldi also. We've got a propane hose so we can set up our um, camp stove and hook it up to the propane on the side of the trailer. These are the plugs for our Dometic refrigerator, whether we have it plugged in here to shore power or if we have it hooked up to the truck while we're traveling. Then we've got an extra propane tank, our hoses for the air conditioner, a little space heater. So this is kind of our junk drawer is what I consider it. All right, um, this foam here is actually from our mattress. I put it kind of in between some things so while we're traveling. We're not bagging up the um, knobs and things from our camp stove and kind of in the corner that we're not, not marring things up. So then on this side, we have our camp stove and our grill. So first thing I do when I get to camp is actually take those out, put the grill under the camper and the camp stove usually goes on the side table. And that's where the miscellaneous extra tubs from the middle shelf get put um, so that we have more space in that middle shelf for moving things around. And we got more foam in there protecting the walls so the sides of the hiker might as well use it we're gonna throw it away anyway when we're down in this area we have the rear receiver um have not used that for anything we did experiment with some bikes i don't want to get too much weight on there i think hiker recommends around 200 pounds don't quote me on that talk to them about weight limits on the rear receiver but uh we do have it it definitely is an option if we need it So that is the galley, um, and like I had shown in previous videos, I've got push button lights under all of these. So it's the LED strip lights, and they are dual controlled. You can turn them on bright white or you can turn them on red. They work really, really slick. So that is the galley. The last thing we want to show you is the awning.
One of the things I get asked about a lot in campgrounds is the awning. They've never seen anything like it. Now, this is the Darchi brand. There are other brands. It's the Batwing. 23-0 is coming out with a new one. There's a bunch of different ones. You're going to have to contact Hiker and see what the latest one is at that time. Um, I can't just say. I know they're not offering this one anymore, but there's a similar product out there. So the nice thing about these 270 awnings, and I'm going to speak generically, is um, the ability to zip on walls, which we're kind of working on getting a set of walls. So you could literally expand the space by having this come out on an angle, staking it down to store extra gear, which is pretty dumb handy. It's all self-sufficient. So underneath here, you've got these joints and these arms swing out, as you saw. It took us just seconds to set it up and deploy it. Now, it has three poles that you initially deploy, but after you get your three poles, they do recommend, if it's a still night, you don't need to anchor strap anything down, but it's highly recommended in case you get a gust of wind to strap it down and run your straps. We had some 60 mile per hour gusts come through our campsite two weeks ago, and this thing was the only awning out. Everybody else had put theirs away, and it went through it no problems. Now, granted, I staked the daylights out of it out because I was a little paranoid about it, but it held up like a champ. And they've got these little tie-out points. You tie out a rope and pull down slightly, creates a little bit of a valley and that's your gutter and then the gutter will allow water to drain off the top which is really handy so what we typically do for our setup configuration is we have this pole there's an accessory pole camera focus over in this area here then there's also the uh, two main poles you've got that one here and you've got this one here. So we will put those down and then we will purposely not put this accessory pole here. For some reason, this is kind of the area we work off the most for food. And we put up a portable table. We'll set up a portable table in this area. And that So with everything happening back in the galley area, it's nice to have the table either here or you can fit a picnic table up in this area here. So the nice thing is the trailer comes all the way to the end and has coverage to the end of the trailer. So we absolutely love it. We usually incorporate it with a tailgater awning a screened in room something else with it um, if we have more than just the two of us but if it's just the two of us this gives us plenty of coverage we'll talk to you later like share and subscribe we'll see you next time guys